Hello everyone, this is a second video of the chapter Cell, the unit of life. In previous video, we have learned about prokaryotic cell or the primitive type of cell, the cell containing primitive nucleus in which we have learned that in prokaryotic cell, the nucleus is a primi of primitive type without containing any nuclear membrane and the nucleus in prokaryotic is called nucleoid okay but if you see in eukaryotic cell which simply means cell containing advanced nucleus or true nucleus it is found that the nucleus is prominent and is surrounded by a clear uh, nuclear membrane as you can see in this diagram and also eukaryotic cell is composed of many membrane bounded organelles unlike prokaryotic cell which lacks these membrane bounded organelles now, in eukaryotes, a complete set of genetic material is found or in eukaryotes, multiple linear structure of chromosomes can be found, okay? Now, if you see this diagram in, okay, let me draw it again. It will be very clear then in prokaryotic cell a single uh, chromosome is found in circular manner or we can say a single circular chromosome is found but if you see in eukaryotic cell multiple layers of linear chromosome strands are found okay that's the difference in chromosomes in eukaryote and prokaryotes now, eukaryotic cells also contain other membrane-bounded organelles within their cytoplasm. As we have studied that eukaryotic cell contains many membrane-bounded organelles such as Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, and etc. But prokaryote cells lack these membrane-bounded organelles. Now, in eukaryotes, we come across two types of cell. One is animal cell and the other one is plant cell. Okay. Now the basic difference between animal cell and plant cell is the absence and presence of cell wall. Okay. Now with plasma membrane, plant cells also have a distinct structure, a distinct covering, a distinct and tough covering, which is called the cell wall, which is absent in plant cells sorry which is absent in animal cells but present in plant cells okay this the cell wall is rigid which gives the plant cells a tough and rigid structure and the cell wall is made up of cellulose the second important difference in plant and animal cells is that plant cells contain plastids okay now Plastids are uh, plastids are membrane bounded organelles that are found in plants. Okay, plastids are are of three types. We will study about it in the coming videos. Uh, the plastids are of three types, which are chromoplast, chloroplast, and leucoplast. Okay, these membrane bounded organelles, plastids, are present in plant cells, but they are absent in animal cells. Okay. But there is an exception. Euglena, which belong to the protozoa, which is an animal, possesses plastique, being an animal. So it is often asked in the exams that name the animal which possess plastids. Okay, so you have to answer that Euglena, which belongs to protozoa, is an animal that possesses plastids. Okay. Now, one of the other differences is that vacuoles, okay, vacuoles, uh, which uh, vacuoles are present, uh, if present in animal cells are small or temporary, but in, anim in plant cells, vacuoles are large and prominent, okay. Another important difference is the presence and absence of centrosome, okay. Now, centrosome is a membrane-bounded organelle which helps the cell in performing cell division. 
In animal cells, centrosome is present, but plant cells lack centrosome. But that doesn't mean plant cells don't perform cell division. Plant cells perform cell division, but they have a different mechanism for perf performing cell division. Here also, in animal cells, there is an exception. It is often asked in the, also asked in the exams that name an animal cell that don't have or lacks, that lacks centrosome. And the answer is nerve cell. Nerve cell, which is present in our nervous system, which we call neuron, okay? These neurons don't have centrosome. And that's the only reason that neurons never divide, okay? Remember that, important. Now, we just studied that plant cells have a distinct structure and we call it cell wall. Now, this cell wall gives the plant cells mechanical strength and support and gives it a tough and, uh, okay, tough structure. Now, this cell wall is composed or made, made up of cellulose. Okay, in general cases or in, you can say in higher plants and in most of the plants, cell wall is made up of cellulose. But in some cases, cell wall can also be made up of hemicellulose, pectin and in many cases, lignin. Okay. Now, cell wall is secreted by the protoplast on the outside of the cell membrane. Okay. Now, not only plants contain cell wall, but also fungi, bacteria, and algae also possess cell wall. But in case of these organisms or group of organisms like fungi and bacteria, the cell wall is made up of different substances. Like in case of fungi, the cell wall is made up of chitin. Okay, in fungi, the cell wall is made up of chitin. And in bacteria, the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. Now, in previous videos, we have learned that what is peptidoglycan? Okay, peptidoglycan is a type of, uh, okay, peptidoglycan is a type of, uh, no, it's a substance that is made up of two types of subunits. Now, what are these subunits? These subunits are NAG and NAM. If you remember, in the previous video, we have st I show I showed you the structure of peptidoglycan, okay, which is formed by the cross linkage of which is formed by the cross linkage of NAG and NAM, okay? Now, what is NAG and NAM? Now, let me tell you the full form of NAG is N Acetyl glucosamine. So the full form of NAG is N acetyl glucosamine, and the full form of NAG is N. Acetyl muramic acid. Okay, so simply this um, peptidoglycan is a polymer of these two subunits, they join together to form the peptidoglycan, and you see this chitin here. Chitin is made up of the small units of N-acetyl glucosamine or NAG. 
okay now what's the function of cell wall cell wall protects the pleuro protoplast or the uh, cell from losing water okay the it helps the uh, the cell from losing or it prevents the cell from losing excessive water it helps it prevents the cell from exposure to excessive heat and foreign attacks okay and provides mechanical strength to the cell now cell wall can be differentiated into three layers or cell wall three types of uh, sorry okay uh -huh. three layers cell wall can be differentiated into first layer the primary wall or you can also say that uh, three types of cell wall can oh, sorry two types of cell wall can be present we'll study about this now okay the first type of or the first layer of cell wall that is seen in plant cells is the primary cell wall now what is this primary cell wall okay now the primary cell wall is, is the cell wall that is found in the cell of young plants okay young plant cells form a single layer of wall material okay which is called the primary wall and the primary wall is thick sorry thin and elastic it says delicate which means thin okay and also elastic and is capable of expansion in a growing cell we know that the growing cell expands in size so the the primary wall also expands okay being elastic and another thing thing to note that in plants there are two types of cells which only contains the primary cell wall which don't have the other type of cell wall which uh, we will study remember these cells are parenchyma and meristematic cells these are the these cells only contain one wall which is primary wall and another thing to note that primary wall diminishes or vanishes at maturity in all plant cells except these two cells because throughout their life they only contain primary wall but in other cells of plants primary wall vanishes in maturity moving to the second layer or the second type of wall that is seen in plants which is a secondary wall now in mature cell more layers of wall material are added which forms the secondary wall and another thing to note that secondary wall gets deposited inside the okay in the inner side of the primary cell wall okay which in later life of plant cells replace, replaces the primary cell wall okay now in some cases the and the primary wall is thick in characteristics okay it, and it is also made up of cellulose and can be made up of uh, hemicellulose and lignin and also in some cases the uh, secondary cell wall gets thick okay this thickening occurs particularly in cells that form the harder body parts of the plants okay now the thickening or the extra thickening of secondary wall happens in the cells which forms the harder part or the woody parts of the plants okay in softer parts that extra thickening doesn't takes place now the third type of cell wall or i won't call it a cell wall it is a type of uh, layer or you can say a junction okay a layer commonly it is called a layer which is present between two adjacent cells and it holds the cell together now what and that layer is called middle lamella okay now middle lamella is a cementing layer present between two cells now what's the function of cement the function of cement is that it holds okay it holds 
two bodies together okay, or two bricks together. The same is the function of middle lamella. The middle lamella holds two cells together and forms the tissue. Okay, it holds many cells together, okay, and that forms the tissue. The middle lamella is made up of calcium and magnesium pectate. The constitution of middle lamella is calcium and magnesium pectate. The middle lamella is sticky and gel-like, okay. Now, another thing, it is uh, another thing. You see that when fruits ripen, they become jelly-like, thin, watery, okay? Now, why that happens? That happens because the pectate compounds solubilize, okay? The pectate compounds become, uh, breaks down or they become soluble, okay? They become thin and makes the fruit soft, okay? Why at ripening the fruit becomes soft? because the pectate compounds present in the middle lamella of fruit uh, the middle lamella of the cells of the fruit they solubilize to soft jelly like substances okay that's why the fruit becomes soft now now getting back to the secondary wall now the secondary wall is not uniformly deposited at all places. Very important. The secondary wall is not uniformly deposited at all the places. There are certain unthickened areas and those unthickened areas are called pits. And through these pits, fine cytoplasmic strands which are known as plasmodesmata pass from one cell to another and connect endoplasmic reticulum and cytoplasm of two neighboring cells. Now, very important, these unthickened areas may form a path between two cells, okay? Through these, unthick, uh, these unthickened areas form holes, okay? And through these holes, cytoplasm, you can see this diagram. If you follow this diagram, okay, this area is result, this Okay, these are two plant cells. You can see the diagram I've drawn here. These are two plant cells and these are the cell walls and these unthickened areas. Okay, both the unthickened areas of the cell wall has resulted in, in a formation of a hole. Okay, a connection between these two cells. And through this connection, cytoplasm, okay, strands of cytoplasm pass comes uh, pass from one cell to other and makes establishes a connection a pathway between these two cells okay this pathway or the cytoplasm okay the cytoplasm make pathway which is uh, formed by the pass of cytoplasm from okay from the passage of cytoplasm strands from this cell to this cell through the pits is called plasmodesmata now another thing to note that through this plasmodesmata substances or water can travel from one cell to other cell. Now as the a cell is living, okay, the cell is living and inside the cell passage of materials is taking place place. So this passage is called or this path, okay, through which uh, exchange between two cell happens okay it's called or this plasmodesmata path is called living path but there's also another path for exchange of materials or water which is the cell wall okay now water or any other substance as cell wall is not semi permeable like uh, cell membrane cell wall is permeable to everything okay all the compounds as it is dead but at the same time, it protects the cell from uh, unwanted compounds, okay? Water and some useful compounds, okay, can enter through the cell wall. You can follow this green line, okay? Enter through the cell wall and 
inside the cell wall travels to other cell and enters the cell okay as cell wall is living sorry the cell wall is dead and this traveling of materials takes place through a dead area this path is called dead path or another name of this dead path is apoplast okay now through this pits also endoplasmic reticulum or parts of endoplasmic reticulum from one cell okay enters other cell this also helps in exchanging of materials from one cell to other cell okay now what these what this uh, traveling of uh, okay what this formation of or uh, entering of um, or this simply this is called okay the endoplasmic reticulum going from one cell to other cell okay this is called desmotivule very important the cytoplas uh, sorry the endoplasmic reticulum which travels from one cell to other cell through the pits okay or through the plasmodesmata is called desmotivule remember that now after the cell wall comes the plasma membrane or the cell membrane or the second covering and remember plasma membrane is in universal membrane a cell does have cell wall or doesn't have cell wall it should have a plasma membrane or it should it wouldn't serve survive okay now the plasma membrane is present in between cell wall and cytoplasm it is a common thing that inside the plasma membrane there is cytoplasm and outside the plasma membrane there is cell wall that's why it is said the cell plasma membrane is present between cell wall and cytoplasm okay it is delicate it is not as thick as cell membrane and it is semi permeable what does the word semi permeable means semi permeable means that it only permits the passage of certain types of substances through it very important that the plasma membrane doesn't allows the passage of all types of materials through it it only allows the passage of certain types of materials or substances through it and that's why it is called semi permeable now this permeability depends on psychological state of cell or size and nature of molecules now what is the psychological state of cell this generally says the concentration of materials inside and outside the cell okay which we call gradient and size and shape and nature of molecules okay that some molecules having a particular nature is not permitted as i said that plasma membrane is semi permeable which generally means that some molecules are permitted to pass through it and some molecules are not permitted to pass through it okay now the plasma membrane also flow uh, regulates the flow of water inside or outside the cell now the plasma in sorry in earlier days the uh, structure okay the structure of plasma membrane which is a very interesting structure which was Uh, formulated let later or discovered later in early days it was not known until the discovery of electron microscope okay you've probably heard of electron microscope which is a very developed type of microscope okay after the dis- uh, after electron microscope came the structure of plasma membrane became very clear to the scientists and in 1972 as j singer and g l nicholson which uh, these two scientists propose a very clear model of the plasma membrane which is known as the fluid mosaic model okay and this fluid mosaic model helps us understand the plasma membrane in a very clear and easy way okay now what this fluid model talks about the plasma membrane okay we will study this uh, fluid mosaic model in detail but first see what the fluid mosaic model talks about the plasma membrane 
the first point it says that bilayer of phospholipid form the core of plasma membrane okay now the these phospholipids remember these phospholipids are the structural units of plasma membrane we will study about this phospholipids but remember these phospholipids okay form the units or the base okay the core of the or in simple words the phospholipids are the units of plasma membrane and they are arranged in bilayer means the plasma membrane is formed by two layers of these phospholipids okay which is the core or unit of the plasma membrane second point it says that proteins are embedded randomly okay on the surface and on the outer surface and inner surface of the plasma membrane okay proteins are embedded randomly on the peripheral means the outer and the integral or the inside surfaces okay inside portion of this bilayer of phospholipids okay now bilayer has a fluid consistency okay unlike cell wall the bilayer simply says uh, talks about the cell membrane a uh, cell membrane or the plasma membrane is bilayer this cell membrane is fluid has a fluid consistency it means it is not as much it's it's not tough like cell wall okay now why this uh, uh, why this plasma membrane has a fluid nature fluid nature it means it can change its shape and configuration because of the presence of unsaturated fatty acids okay you know what are unsaturated fatty okay unsaturated you know what are unsaturated you've studied in chemistry in class 10 that unsaturated are the carbon compounds okay fatty acids are generally carbon compounds or organic compounds or unsaturated organic compounds are the carbon compounds which have double bond between the carbon car which simply have carbon carbon double bond okay this the presence of unsaturated fatty acids give the phospholipid a fluid consistency okay now you can see this is the picture of plasma membrane okay this is the picture of plasma membrane which can be seen if viewed under okay it can be seen if we view the plasma membrane under the high power electron microscopes okay high power electron microscope now this diagram you see here this uh, presents a very clear okay much clear uh, this is schematic diagram of the plasma membrane and this helps us understand the plasma membrane is a much, in a much better way now remember we talked about uh, we what we talked about we talked about certain types of core present in plasma membrane which are called phospholipids or the units of plasma membrane which we called phospholipids now you see here these spherical structures with two okay tails with tails you see here one is also zoomed here this structure is the phospholipid this structure you see here is the phospholipid now you can very clearly see here that these phospholipids are present in abundant number in the plasma membrane or these phospholipids are forming the base or the framework of the plasma membrane in which these other structures are embedded 
okay that's the reason this phospholipids are called the core or the units of plasma membrane now these phospholipids have two divisions or these phospholipids have two okay uh, two parts one part is this spherical head another part is these tails okay this spherical head is a phosphate head means this head is made up of phosphate and this spherical head is a made up of fatty acid now this phosphate head is hydrophilic and this fatty acid tail is hydrophobic now what this word hydrophilic and hydrophobic means now in case as it is said that this phosphate head is hydrophilic now hydro means water and philly means loving okay hydro means water and philly means loving so it can be said that these phosphate head loves water <laughs> or you can simply say that these phosphate head can associate or ca can come in contact or or you can simply say that they come in contact or they interact with water okay or they are attracted towards water that's why they are called hydrophilic unlike the fatty acid tails which are hydrophobic now hydro means as i said water and phobic means to fear means they fear water or they do not or they don't interact with water okay as you know uh, water is a polar compound you may have learned in earlier classes that water is a polar compound as this phosphate head can interact with water or it uh, so it can associate with water this phosphate head is called polar and uh, the fatty acid tails as uh, it it doesn't associates with water or it is made up of organic compounds like fatty acid and fatty acid which are non polar this tail is also non polar as it is made up of non polar compounds fatty acid now as we studied that uh, plasma membrane is a bilayer of these phospholipids you can very clearly see here that these phospholipids form not only two layer but not only one layer but two layers this is the first layer and this is the second layer now there might be some questions in your mind that why this arrangement of why the uh, phospholipids are arranged in this manner why not uh, this head is connected with this tail and uh, or these tails are on the inner side and the heads are on the outer side there is a reason the reason is that uh, the both the uh, peripheral surfaces okay on both sides of the plasma membrane the plasma membrane can come in contact with water okay you can if you consider this outside the cell and this side of the uh, plasma membrane inside the cell so both these sides can come in contact with water so and that's the reason these spherical or phosphate head these hydrophilic water loving heads are play, uh, facing the uh, facing the outside okay or facing the peripheral regions because they can interact with water okay but as they don't interact with water or they don't associate with water or simple words uh, or in simple words they fear water they are placed in the inner side okay where there is no chance of coming in contact with water understood now i'm explaining it again as on both sides of the plasma membrane there is chances or the both sides of the plasma membrane comes in contact with water so the water loving phosphate head are facing the outside but the hydrophobic or water hating or water fearing 
tails okay which don't associate with water are that are placed on the inner side where okay where there is no chance of coming in contact with water now remember we talked about proteins being embedded inside the these bilayer or uh, proteins being present on the integral and inner side of the plasma membrane so these are the proteins okay these structures you see or here these blue structures you see these are the proteins you see this one this is the this is a peripheral protein or present in the outskirts okay or the peripheral region of the plasma membrane on the other hand if you see this protein this is embedded deep inside the bilayer okay now in plasma also here you can see this is this is a peripheral protein and also this is a peripheral protein and this these two are integral proteins okay now in plasma membrane there are two types of protein present okay now remember these proteins are these protein acts as channels okay now i told you that uh, phospholipids okay these phospholipids okay these phospholipids doesn't allows the passage of charged particles and large particles okay the particles which are large remember that these phospholipids or through the phospholipids charged particles the ch particles or uh, or in simple words ions okay ions or large substances can can't pass okay through these phospholipids simply because ions are non ions are not non polar okay ions are polar because they have charges okay as as uh, when they will pass okay they have to go through these phospholipids but you see inside it is full of non polar fatty acid tails okay which cannot come in con contact with ions or polar substances okay that's why ions and also bigger substances can't pass through this okay through these phospholipids for the passage of ions and polar substances and bigger substances these proteins are there okay simply these protein acts as channels or pathways inside and outside the cell and these pathways are of two types one is channel protein okay one is this channel protein and other other one is this carrier protein okay now what is the difference between these two proteins now the channel proteins don't through channel proteins passive transport takes place okay now passive transport is a transport which takes place according the concentration gradient now you know about concentration gradient like uh, and when transport happens according to the concentration gradient that type of transport is called passive transport okay and that type of transport is called passive transport because it doesn't needs the inclusion or doesn't have the necessity of the usage okay it doesn't simply in simple words it doesn't doesn't uses energy for the transport of substances okay like uh, some substance is in much more quantity inside the cell and less quantity outside the cell so transport according to concentration gradient will be from higher concentration of substance to lower concentration of substance okay 
that pass that transport of substances which is according to the concentration gradient or from higher to lower concentration is possible through these channels okay through these channel proteins but the passage of substances against the concentration gradient or in simple words from lower concentration to higher concentration which is against the concentration gradient is impossible through these channel proteins at those times you need carrier proteins or these proteins are much better known as pumps okay and these proteins transport substances against the concentration gradient means like if uh, outside the cell some substance is in lower concentration and inside the cell it's in higher concentration so against the concentration gradient transport will be from lower concentration to higher concentration okay now as they transport against the concentration gradient they use energy which is atp as we all know that atp is called energy currency so these carrier proteins needs energy in order to transport materials from lower concentration to higher concentration and this type of transport is called active transport so i hope the structure or the quasi fluid structure of the plasma membrane is very clear now i told you that plasma membrane is not tough or it's very fluid like so why it is so because these phospholipids can undergo lateral movement like let me give you an example uh, like the cell might undergo some type of injury okay that as a result of those injury some parts of these phospholipids get detached okay get destroyed then what will happen these phosph phospholipids will move laterally like this and will take their place okay and also it these phospholipids can change their configuration by getting closer or getting a little bit further from each away okay that's why the cell membrane or the plasma membrane can change its con configuration sometimes so i hope this the uh, quas uh, the fluid mosaic model is very clear now moving to our next topic which is the endoplasmic reticulum now what is this endoplasmic reticulum this endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane bounded organelle okay this is a membrane bounded organelle and remember this endoplasmic reticulum is absent in case of prokaryotes as we have studied now through electron microscope studies it is seen that in eukaryotic cell there is a presence of network of tubules okay network of tubular structures throughout the cell these tubular structures it is scattered throughout the cell and throughout the cytoplasm these tubular structures these network is called the cytoplasm sorry sorry this network is called the endoplasmic reticulum which is spread throughout the cytoplasm inside the cell okay it is called endoplasmic reticulum now this endoplasmic reticulum was discovered by porter porter et al in 1945 now if you see this diagram which is which i have drawn see this is the structure of endoplasmic reticulum okay let me show you a uh, a uh, picture first okay this is the endoplasmic reticulum which generally presents uh, okay uh, surrounding the nucleus and throughout the cell okay this is the endoplasmic reticulum also the endoplasmic reticulum is present throughout the cell as you can see from the nucleus they are traveling endoplasmic reticulum is present from the nucleus to the plasma membrane okay and it forms a tubular and network inside the cytoplasm okay 
the whole cell is uh, the cytoplasm okay the throughout the cytoplasm these uh, network are present okay now we'll return to the structure later first let us study about the endoplasmic reticulum more now the endoplasmic reticulum is a membranous system that extends from plasma membrane up to the nuclear membrane okay also the endoplasmic reticulum keeps on changing means its shape keeps on changing it's uh, totally has a different types of shapes and structures as you can see the plasma membrane as i've drawn here sorry the endoplasmic reticulum travels touches okay it's travels uh, it's present fro uh, from the plasma membrane this is the plasma membrane to the nuclear membrane okay this is the nuclear membrane this one okay this one is the nuclear membrane it is present from the plasma membrane to the nuclear membrane and you can see this forms a network okay this forms simply forms a passage or network okay between the plasma membrane and the nuclear membrane okay now the uh, endoplasmic reticulum generally has three types of structures associated with it these three type of structures are cisterni okay these three type of structures are cisterni tubules and vesicles okay what are cisterni you see these uh, parallel structures okay you see these parallel structures these parallel sac like structures okay as uh, look these network uh, these uh, networks of parallel sac like structures here these are called cisterni as you can see it's le leveled here these are called cisterni and you see these tube like structures these are called tubules okay and these oval structures these are called vesicles now what's the function of cisterni okay cisterni as i said are long okay long flattened parallel sac like interconnected structures the function of cisterni is protein production these produces or synthesizes proteins okay and the these tubules are long slender branched or unbranched structures and the function of these tubules are they are more closely associated with synthesis of sterols okay sterols and lipids also the uh, the functions of protein uh, the functions of uh, these tubules and the cisterni are uh, transport of subst substances throughout the cell as if you see this diagram they form a network okay they not only produce substances but they also facilitate the transport of substances through these tubes okay through these network okay as you can remember that uh, we studied that endoplasmic reticulum from one cell through the uh, pits or plasmodesmata travels to other cell and i say that that the purpose of that traveling of uh, or the movement of uh, endoplasmic reticulum from one cell to other facilitates transport okay which is called desmotubule you can see here these tubules okay which are touching the plasma membrane these tubules forms the desmotubule okay and as you can see these desmotubule okay these tubules which can also travel if they go on if they extends they travel they travel to the okay neighboring cell 
as desmotabule through the plasmodesmata. As you can see, these form network throughout the cell. Okay, so these networks are simply used for transport of materials throughout the cell. Okay, and also as these tubules travels to other cells also, the materials can also be transferred to other cells through these tubules. Okay. Now, one of the other thing that is very important is the different types of, okay. Now, remember, don't confuse that the things like the tubules, cisterni and vesicles we just studied are structures, okay, different structures of uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Those were not types of endoplasmic reticulum, but, okay, those are structures. Now, we will study the types of endoplasmic reticulum, which are smooth and rough. Okay, now the main reason the endoplasmic reticulum is rough because of the presence of ribosomes. And as you have studied in earlier classes that ribosomes are present on the surfaces of the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, and that makes the endoplasmic reticulum rough and we call those endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, and the second type of or the second type of endoplasmic reticulum that can be seen is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum as you can see here. Okay, these endoplasmic reticulum doesn't have the ribosomes on their surfaces. And that's why they are called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now also, the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is protein synthesis. Okay, now the smooth endoplasmic reticulum generally comprises of the cisternal structures. Okay, okay, the smooth or sorry, the rough endoplasmic reticulum are generally composed of the cisterny structures, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum com are composed of the tubules and the vesicle structures. Okay, now the cisterny. Uh, let me tell you this in this uh, in a very clear way that the cisterny falls under the rough endoplasmic reticulum category okay and the tubules and the vesicle comes under the smooth endoplasmic reticulum part okay as the function of ribosomes is protein synthesis the function of rough endoplasmic reticulum is also protein synthesis as these are closely associated or uh, and their surface is embedded with ribosomes and the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the production of sterols okay sterols and lipids okay now also the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is detoxification of drugs another function you may note it that the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also detoxification of drugs. Means sometimes, sometimes, uh, some types of drugs enter our bodies. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps to detoxify the toxic, uh, those toxic drugs which are harmful for us. Okay. Now the function of endoplasmic reticulum. First function is mechanical support and acts as endoskeleton or cytoskeleton of the cell. Now if you see this diagram here, you see this is scattered throughout the cell okay, as a network. Starting from the plasma membrane to the, uh, these nuclear membrane. So you see here, these network also helps okay this network system also help provide mechanical support okay these endoplasmic reticulum which is forming this network structure in throughout the cell as you can see here they provide mechanical support to
to the cell from inside okay so when pressure is allowed sorry or sorry pressure is applied to the cell from outside they help the cell from getting collapsed okay they provide a mechanical support from inside now these endoplasmic reticulum divide the Com divide the cytoplasm in two compartments. Again, if you see this diagram, you see inside this network or inside this tubule, there is a space enclosed inside this tubules, which is I'm marking by the black by the black lines. Okay, some space are enclosed. This space that is enclosed inside these inside the membranes okay of uh, or inside the endoplasmic reticulum this compartment is called luminal compartment okay this compartment is called luminal luminal compartment and the compartment which is present outside the endoplasmic reticulum that compartment is called extra luminal compartment okay now uh, the division of cytoplasm into compartments is due uh, helps in dividing the area of different enzymatic reactions that uh, takes place in the cytoplasm okay now as i told you that smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps in the synthesis of sterols and phospholipids so one of the function of uh, endoplasmic reticulum is the synthesis of sterols and phospholipids okay and the function of rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cell is protein synthesis and secretion as ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis which are closely associated with rough endoplasmic reticulum so the overall function of endoplas uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum is transport and synthesis of proteins okay so also one of the other that's why other function of endoplasmic reticulum in total is protein synthesis and the last function is the endoplasmic reticulum provides precursor for the formation of lysosomes now you have uh, studied in previous classes that lysosomes have certain types of enzymes inside them okay and remember that lysosomes are formed in the golgi complex or the golgi bodies about which we will learn in the coming classes golgi bodies in which lysosomes are formed okay but endoplasmic reticulum forms the precursor okay precursor means the raw materials for the formation of lysosomes and the enzymes of lysosomes okay the formation of lysosomes takes place in golgi complex but the raw material for the formation of these lysosomes and its enzymes are given by or provided by the endoplasmic reticulum okay now our next thing is the ribosomes now we all know that ribosomes are non membranous particles okay Ri and also ribosomes can be present freely in cytoplasm or attached to the outer surface of nuclear membrane or endoplasmic reticulum as you all know that uh, ribosomes are can also remain attached to the endoplasmic reticulum which is the rough endoplasmic reticulum okay now ribosomes are also present in chloroplast and mitochondria very important okay except inside the cell okay ribosomes are present inside the cell but these two cell organelles mitochondria and chloroplast okay they have their own ribosomes inside their own bodies okay now the function of ribosome is protein synthesis 
Very important, the function of ribosome is protein synthesis or ribosomes are site for protein synthesis. Now, ribosomes, as we know, can uh, present free in cytoplasm or attached in to endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Now, the ribosome that are present inside the cell or uh, inside the cytoplasm of the cell or attached to endoplasmic reticulum are of ATS type. Okay. And the ribosomes which are present inside the chloroplast and mitochondria, which you just study here, that ribosomes are also present in chloroplast and mitochondria. So the ribosomes which are present inside mitochondria and chloroplast are of 70S types. Okay. Now, one ribosome type is made up of a larger unit and a smaller unit. As you can see, this diagram that this is a this is a ribosome okay which is made up of two subunits a large subunit and a small subunit in case of uh, ats type the large subunit is of 60s type and the small subunit is 40s and in case of 70s type the large subunit is 50s and the small subunit is 70s okay now you might be wondering what is this s this s is called swedberg unit okay swedberg is a scientist who first discovered the ribosomes now what is the swedberg unit components of cell after centrifugation centrifugation or sedimentation or settle down at different speeds depending upon their masses and size. The coefficient of sedimentation is represented in Swedberg unit and depicted as S. Now you have probably learned about centrifugation or sedimentation like a components, okay? Components uh, present in a liquid or present uh, in a substance when centrifuge, when uh, uh, exposed to centrifugation, its components or uh, its inner substances or its inner molecules, particles set, uh, fall down or they undergo sedimentation in the bottom okay, of the liquid. Okay, so the coefficient of this sedimentation okay, means how much, uh, which compound gets sedimentated sedimentated uh, in the bottom of the liquid that's called the coefficient of sedimentation is called the Swedberg unit. So that's all for today. I hope everyone understood today, today's class. So meet you. So we'll be uh, meeting in the next class with another video and we will continue the this chapter thank you